It's a mini crash course today. I'm literally going to take you through the last few weeks in a snapshot in two hours looking at workings. Okay, the, the focus is going to be on workings because they do test calculations quite a bit. Remember, your exam is half multiple choice and half written. So you do need to be able to do calculations as well in terms of the steps. You can't just get the answer and then tick the correct answer because it's not all multiple choice. First bit that I need to look at with you is the recap regarding the different sections that we've covered so far. Right, so capital budgeting is focusing on what? Uh, the capital needed for, for different projects. Yes, okay. Uh, Perfect. Right, so you said projects require capital, and if we're budgeting, we're looking at choosing the best projects. So when looking yeah. at capital budgeting, we have limited resources that need to be allocated to different projects. Not all projects are the same. Some projects might offer more benefit than others. So when looking at capital budgeting, there's two things we need to focus on. The first is the cash flow, then the second is the techniques. So what techniques have we looked at? Do you remember the techniques? Um, I'll give you one, payback period. Give me the other. Come guys, what else do we have? Besides payback period, you also have net present value. What else? Internal rates of return. What else? What else? Uh, is it a, ri a rate of a risk or risk rate or whatever? Okay, no, the, the the risk the risk rate is the risk adjusted discount rate. That's a refinement. Okay. Okay, but yeah, that's a refinement. So you can include risk when looking at capital budgeting. Then you either provide for risk in terms of the risk adjusted discount rate, or you use the certainty equivalence. And that adjusts the cash flow. Yeah. Equivalent. Okay, so it's equivalent. Right, we also had what else here? Profitability index. And what happens if projects have different useful lives? Uh, sorry, okay. What happens if projects have different useful lives? Um, then you do a calculation to... to um, so you do a calculation of both of them to see which one is profitable. Okay, you annualize the amounts. Annualize NPV. Make sense? Yeah. Tammy? Yeah. Okay. All right. So when looking at capital budgeting, you've got five separate workings that you use to do what? Make a decision. What is the decision? Accept or reject. We're looking at different projects. Right. So those first three bullets go together. Some past papers give you a long question on it. Other past papers give you a short question on it. But it always comes up. Capital budgeting is a big section that is going to be part of the exam. Then we've got cost of capital. What is cost of capital? I'm basically looking... Um, will you get your will you get the the capital back if you invested or for how fast you get the capital back? Correct. So this is the outlay or the investment. Okay. So for a company to invest, what do they need? 
they need the initial investment. The initial investment is going to be an amount of funds that you're going to have to raise. And where do you raise capital? Debt or equity? Equity. Okay, so debt and equity will both be part of the cost of capital. Right, then we, when we looked at that section, we spoke about debt and we calculated cost of capital by working out the yield on the, the yield to maturity for a bond. Okay, if we're issuing bonds. Okay, or if we looked at capital, then we looked at the I for the Gordon growth model. Okay, where we calculated the rate, the return on investment. Or you could use CAPM. CAPM also gives you a required return. Do you agree? Yeah. Yes. Good. Right, and then more recently, we've spoken about this, the WAC. Okay, remember, cost of capital is something that you would have covered, um, covered in FIN 2601. 2601, you looked at debt, and then you looked at equity. Here, we're looking at a combination of the two. Right, so what do I need there? I need a percentage weighting or a split. Right, the marginal cost of capital is the WMCC, okay? And the IOS is the opportunity schedule, okay? The investment opportunity schedule. This is a graph. The one goes up, the one comes down, and at some point they're going to intersect, and that becomes the point of, or the changing point rather, where you have accept and reject. Okay, so you would, you would accept on the left where the initial investment step is providing a bigger return than the cost of capital. Right, and then last week we spoke about theory relating to things regarding leverage. Okay, capital structure, firm value. And then we also looked at policy, okay, dividend policy. We looked at leasing, we looked at mergers and acquisitions. Okay, so from an exam point of view, the sections that are important from a long question point of view. Okay, so I'm, I'm focusing mainly on long questions because the long questions carry the most marks. The options that could come up in terms of a long question, you could get a long question on capital budgeting. You could get a long question on weighted average cost of capital and WMCC. Or you could get a long question on capital structure and firm value. Okay, those are the different possibilities of long questions. Right, the rest are obviously going to be short questions or part of a longer question. Happy with the scope? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good. Okay, so now we can summarize. So all of those chapters can be grouped into different sections. The first three are looking at investment decisions because you're looking at the return and you're comparing the return to the risk risk and return okay cap m but when we looked at those concepts financing decisions here we're looking at where do we raise capital equity yes and that was the focus here okay so we could use leverage we could use debt we could use equity, we could use a different capital structure. Okay, so remember, companies decide how much debt and how much equity. So do I hold 70% debt and 30% equity? Or do I hold 40% debt and 60% equity? Whose decision is that? The company. Okay, so capital structure is determined by who? Financial manager. Exactly. The financial manager. They make the decision in terms of how aggressive are they going to be in terms of taking out loans. Okay? Leverage. Right. Then we looked at things like degree of operating leverage, degree of financial leverage, degree of total leverage. Those were working we did then when focusing on leverage. Make sense? Yeah. Good. And in the last bit is obviously theory, other long-term considerations and concepts that relate to the company's operation. Okay, so merger and acquisition. Okay, congeneric mergers, horizontal, vertical. Okay, conglomerate, etc. Right, leasing. You get two types of leases. What are they? Uh. 
One where you can lease to buy, another one where they where you just lease. Good. So operating or, or financing leases. Uh, yes. Okay, you get an operating lease and you get a financial lease. Good. Okay, so let's first cover the capital budgeting. You know this is going to be a big question. Okay, if you look at past papers, it normally is. It's one of the big questions that could come up. So what is capital budgeting? There's the definition in case you've forgotten. A process for evaluating and selecting the investments that are consistent with the firm's goal of maximizing wealth. That's important. So how do I maximize wealth? I need to budget and I need to look at what? The cost, the cash flow. Okay, so three motives for capital expenditure, expansion or replacement or renewal. Okay, so expansion, easy or difficult to do? Um, should be easier. It is easy, why? Because you just basically buy only more properties, more land, you buy more assets. Okay, but if it's expansion, there's going to be no old asset. Okay, so do I look at the old asset? Is the old asset relevant to the current decision? No. No, it isn't. Okay, so expansion is easier to do then. Replacement or renewal because there's no old asset. If you have a if you have a renewal, then do you need to look at the old? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you do. Okay, so then it's new minus old, and the old will be relevant. Make sense? Got that, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Other purposes could be advertising, R&D, consulting. They don't cover those in this particular module. You're just focusing on those two decisions. Either the decision to expand or the decision to replace or renew an asset. If it's replacement or renewal, I need to consider the old asset because it is relevant to decision making. Some more theory. You get two types of projects. You get independent projects and you get mutually exclusive ones. If something is independent, does it stand on its own? Yes. 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 Okay, so just imagine that. Think about what does it mean to be independent. Okay? That applies to a project as well. If an independent project exists, does the one project affect the other? No. No, no. it doesn't. It's independent. So can you choose more than one? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay, so if you're independent, okay, the projects are separate. Those projects are acceptable. You can accept multiple projects that are independent. If a project is mutually okay. exclusive, accepting one project eliminates another. So can I accept more than one? No. No, it's A or B. It's never A and B. Okay, if it's independent, well then you've got A and B. That's different, because now you can choose more than one. Got that? Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Okay, then you need to also know the difference between conventional and non-conventional cash flow. That's pretty easy to remember, because conventional meaning initial outflow and always a series of inflows. Inflow. When it's non-conventional, non-conventional means not according to the norm. Okay, so here I have a series of inflows and outflows. So all you need to really consider is the outflows. If you've got a timeline where you've got an initial investment, that initial investment is obviously negative, right? And then later on in the project's life, you might have another negative 10. Okay, because you've got another negative and amount here, in terms of outflow, this is non-conventional. Because it creates a problem, because I don't 
have one IRR, I'll have multiple IRRs when I have initial investments that occur over the life of the project. Make sense? Yes. Great. What is a relevant cash flow? Define it for me. If something is relevant, what does it do to decision making? Makes it easier because that the cost has to do with the decision. Okay, yes, it affects the decision making. Good. Okay, so that's something that's relevant. If something is relevant, it affects decision making. Okay, question. Is a sunk cost a relevant cost? No. Why not? Give me a sunk cost. What is a sunk cost? Well, it's um, the decision that you've already made, so there's nothing you can do about it now. It's done yes. and over. Okay, with. so research and development, marketing, perhaps, yeah. or market research, rather. Can you recover those costs, whether you do the project or not? No. No, you can't. Okay, those costs are, inverted commas, sunk costs because they cannot be recovered. Relevant costs are those relevant costs for yeah. cash flow? Yes. Yes, they are. Okay, so where do I find the initial investment? At the start or the end? Start. At the start. Okay, so remember, you as, uh, as a financial manager are going to have to draw up the timeline and you are going to have to get the cash flows before you discount them back in time right so initial investment is at the beginning OCF is during and TCF is where right at the end right and that's the that's the timeline right so when you approach a capital budgeting question normally you have to work out those amounts first and then do the discounting and calculating the um, net present value to determine are you going to accept or reject. Make sense? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so now on the next few slides, I'm going to take you through each of these separately. Okay, because they are very, very separate. Initial investment is where in terms of time? In, in the beginning, the At present the beginning, value. Yes. Okay, so what do I have here? Replacement. When I look at a replacement decision, do I need to consider the old? Yes. Yes, so how many calculations do you do for a replacement decision? One, two. Uh, new month old. Two, you use one for the new and you use one for the old. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so for the initial investment, how many calculations do you do? Two. You do one for the new and one for the old. Okay, to get the initial investments. Okay, because does the old asset have relevance? Yeah. Definitely. So is it part of the calculation? Yes. Yes, it is. Right, and then obviously you do the same thing for OCF. Do I need to look at new and old? Yeah. Yes, so I look at both. I do two calculations. And if I look at TCF, do I do two calculations? Yes. Yes, one for the new, one for the old, and the difference is what you then include in the actual workings. Make sense? Yeah. Yes. Great. Okay, so there's the first of the three. What am I calculating here? The initial sure. investment. Okay, so the initial investment is going to take the new and the old into consideration. Right, the tricky bit is this. The after tax proceeds from the old. Okay, because then you need to do some tax. Alright, tax on the sale. So you need to work out the capital gain and you need to work out how much tax you end up paying before getting the proceeds, the after tax proceeds. You'll we'll then add and subtract the networking capital change and that gives you the initial investment. Where is the initial investment sitting? At 
the beginning. beginning. Right at the beginning. So if we draw a little sketch. T0. Initial investment. Because that's where I'll put the answer. Whatever the answer is, I put it at the beginning and then I do the calculation later. Make sense? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Right, so here's the example and there's the blank table. So I want to see if you can do this yourselves. Okay, you do it first. I want to see can you work this out? Okay, and then we do it together and then we check what did you do wrong? What do we need to check? What do we need to improve? What do we need to learn from? Okay, in terms of mistake. Okay, so there's the information. Take some time now to complete the table. Everything. I want this initial investment. Okay, I'll leave the question up in case you want to refer to it. Okay, but take some time now. Get the initial investment. I just need to find a pencil.
Are you guys managing? Yes, I think so. I don't know. Okay, what did you guys get? Initial investment is what? No, I'm not finished. Carl? I'm putting on the calculator. Pardon? I'm putting on the calculator. Okay. I hear tools in the background. Uh, is that Tammy or is that Carl? That's my son. Okay. Alright, do, do you have an answer? Okay, what did you get? Did you guys get the working marks? I'm still busy. Still busy? Yes. Okay. Right, do you guys have the cost of the new assets? Um, cost of the new assets... I don't know, is it three, three million after? Say that again, three million? And fifty. Yes, okay, so how do you get the cost of the new assets? Well, it's the, the cost plus the installation. Exactly, so what are the costs? Uh, fifty thousand and three more. Exactly. So, yeah, I've got that. Now we need the after tax process of the sale of the old. So, how much did the old asset cost? One million. Okay. How much can I sell it for? Yeah, four hundred. Okay. So I need the after tax proceeds. So four hundred plus or minus the tax on the sale. Capital gain or profit. Okay, so did I make a profit here? Well how do I get the capital gain? How do I know if I've made a gain or a loss? What do I need? You need the deep the depreciation value. Good. You need the carrying value. That's correct. Okay, so how old is that? Five years. Four years old. Four years old. So how yeah. much depreciation will you have on a four-year-old asset? Um, four years by 12 months each. No. Five years is the depreciable life. So how much depreciation per yeah. year? Two hundred. Yes. Okay, that's the depreciation per year. So if I've got a four-year-old asset, what's the accumulated depreciation? Well, you times that by four. You times it by four. Okay, so accumulated yeah. depreciation is 800,000. Uh, What's the uh, cost? So you are time to What's the cost? 800. No, a million. So what's the carrying value? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So the carrying Yes. Okay, do you have the carrying value? Yeah, two hundred thousand. So you do you have the proceeds? Yes. So what's the gain? Two hundred. Good. And how much is the gain tax debt? 
Um, 30%. Yes. So what is the what is the tax on the sale? 200,000 rand gain times 30% tax. Does that make no, sense? 60, 60, yeah, so 60,000. Okay, so what is the after tax proceeds from the sale of the asset? 140. 40 minus 60. Not 40, 400 yeah. minus 60. Is that okay? Right, 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 right. Now, why don't you remove the tax from the 400? Because that's what you sold it for. I did. 400 minus 60. No, I mean, because you don't say it's like 400 times 30% tax. Because you, you times the tax by the 200. The tax is only for the 200, yes, because the gain is only taxable. Oh, okay. Okay, only the capital gain is taxed. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Okay, so there's the working. We had it earlier. You had to first work out the carrying value before determining the depreciation. Okay, well, you needed the depreciation to determine the carrying value before determining the after-tax proceeds on the sale of the old. Um, but now, it's, but they basically they'll only focus on straight line accumulation, eh? Well, they could give you straight line or diminishing balance. I haven't seen them give diminishing balance, uh, but straight line, yes, right. quite often. Cool. No, because I don't remember diminishing that. <laughs> yeah, so don't stress too much. I, I don't think diminishing balance will come up. Um, if it does, then you just need to work it out on the carrying value. Okay, but that's more accounting yeah. than finance. Yeah. Okay, okay. No what's the change in networking capital? Uh, is that the 20,000? Correct. It's going to increase. Yeah. Right, so what is my initial investment? Oh, that's close. It's 2730. I said 279 because that's because I made a mess up with uh, I did uh, the yeah, tax. Or the tax. Yeah, just be careful with the tax. Remember, you work out the tax on the gain. Alright. Okay, so almost. Okay, good. <laughs> But are you guys happy with this calculation? Yeah. Tammy? Wait. Just hold on, please. I just quickly want to double check something. Okay. Are you happy? Did you check it? Yes. Any questions? Uh, nope. All good. Okay. No, Tammy? I'm fine. Fine. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Next bit. What are we working out now? Guys, what are we working out now? The operating cash flow. Yeah, so where is that? That's over time, right? Yes. Okay, so that's over the life of the project. So I've given you information here about the new, and I've given you information here about the old. How many calculations right. do we do? Two. <clears throat> you do two. One for the new, one for the old. Okay, so again, I've given you tables here. There's the new. Do you agree the new machine is going to last for five years? Is the revenue and are the expenses the same for those years? Uh, no. Yes, no. the revenue and the expenses are consistent. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, is that the same for the old? It should be then. Yes, okay, for the next five years, revenue and expenses will be 1.5 and 600. Okay, so those are the figures that you're going to have to substitute into the tables on the next two slides. Okay, there's the new, then you need the old. Okay, so recreate those tables. I've given you the templates. Not much for you to do other than record the correct figures in. Okay, and then you're trying to work out the OCF, so try it. I'll leave that up in case you need it.
Right, do you guys have new and old? No. Do you have new? No, not yet. How? Uh, when I printed it, I got the answers already. But mine aren't, mine aren't the same as yours. So okay, so wrong with the how much revenue did we have for the new machine? Two more. Okay, what were the expenses, Tammy? Five hundred thousand. Okay, so what's the E B D I T? One point five. Yes. What's the depreciation? Well, how much is the asset? Three point oh five million. How okay, many well, years will I use the asset for? Okay, well, now why is the asset three point five million? Three point zero five. Because of the installation so cost, you can't been... depreciate an asset uh, that hasn't uh, been installed. Yeah, I was like wondering uh, what. Uh, yes, okay, now I understand. Okay. The initial investment. Yes, the initial investment. Okay, you can't use a, a you can't use an asset if it hasn't been installed. Okay. Okay, so what does that give me? Six hundred and ten. Yes. What's no. the EBRT? Eight nine zero point zero zero zero. Okay, what's the tax on that? Two six seven triple zero. Okay, so net operating profit. That I'm so busy with. What do I get? How do I calculate that? The EBIT minus the tax. Oh. And then to get OCF, what do I do? Subtract the depreciation. Not subtract. Oh, add, sorry. Why add? Because it's a non-cash. It's a non-cash item that you would have subtracted. Okay, so mm. here's the subtraction. You need to add it back to remove it. Okay, because if I'm looking at cash flow, is depreciation the cash flow? No. No, so you need to take it out. So OCF for year 1, 2, 5 is 1, 2, 3, 3, 0, 0, 0. Well, got that. 
Are they going to give it to us in these tables? No, you won't have the tables. You need to draw them up yourselves. Sure. Okay, so you need to remember the templates. And that's why you've got the notes. Um, remember the notes I've referenced from the textbook mainly. Okay, the textbook is a lot better than the study guide. Okay, the textbook gives you the correct calculations. Okay, so what I've referenced okay. here, if you want to look at the textbook example, okay, you can have a look at this. The, the method, the calculation is the same as what we're doing here. Okay. Okay, so now I want old. Can you work out old? Easy or difficult here, guys? Sorry? Difficult. Why difficult? I'm stuck with the depreciation. Okay, how old is the asset? Uh, it was four years old, so there's one year left of the depreciation. Exactly. Okay, so will you have depreciation for that last year? Yes. You will. Okay, because there's still one year left over. Okay, so are we going to have depreciation for the old asset in the first year? Yes. yes. Will we have depreciation for the old asset after the first year? No. No. Yes. Okay, that's why I've given you two tables there. Okay, so revenue for year one. Uh, was it 200,000? No, 1.5 million. Oh, sorry, yeah, uh, 1.5. Expenses for year one? 600. EBIT? EBDIT? Uh, 900. Depreciation for that year? On the old asset? 200. Yes. EBIT? 700. Tax on 700? 219. Net operating profit? 49. 490. Depreciation? 200. Operating cash flow for year one? 690. Good. Okay, do the same thing for year two. Only one amount is going to change though. Quickly work that out. I've helped you with the first year. The second year should be easy. phone ringing no is that is that is that nature or <laughs> someone sounds like you're out in the wilderness oh uh, yeah it's a bird close to the study room okay i was wondering it sounded like a, a, a cell phone ringtone <laughs> okay do you guys have an answer 
Uh, 6.13. Okay. Let's check. Will there be depreciation? Uh, no. No. <laughs> so everything is going to be the same except for that one line item. 6.30 is correct. Happy guys? Yeah. Great. Yeah. So there's the summary. I've taken what we've just worked out and I've plotted it on a timeline. Year 1, Year 2, Year 3, Year 4. What am I trying to find? OCF. This is the OCF. For Year 1, Year 2, Year 3, Year 3, Year 4, Year 5. Right, so those are the figures that I'm going to put where? On my timeline. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Okay, and that's going to help you generate something that you can then discount back in time. Make sense? Yep. Good. Yeah. Okay, TCF. How do I work out TCF? Very similar to initial investment. Except, where do I want the information to sit? At the beginning or at the end? Um, the end. At the end. Okay, so this information that I've described here is at the end of the project's life. Right, so you need to use this in order to calculate the TCF. Okay, so see if you can do that again. Oh, I've done it for you. Okay, so you didn't have to do this. Okay, so I completed the answer for you here. Okay, so let's take the figures through. We expect to sell the asset at the end of five years for 500,000. There are going to be, uh, what was it, 50,000 for the old. Okay, so does the old asset have a carrying value, guys? Yes. No. If the asset at its end of if the asset is at its end of its useful life, what would the carrying value be? Zero. Yes, yeah. the, the answer would be zero. Okay, so notice the tax is on the full amount because there's no carrying value bracket end of its life. So C V equals naught. Carrying value is Zero. Okay. Does that make sense? Oh, okay, so where am I going to put this? At the end of the timeline. Correct. So let's draw the timeline. Put the mounts on. Where are you going to put the initial investment? Beginning. Exactly. So positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Where are you going to put the cash flow? Negative. Correct. And where am I going to put the TCF? Change. Correct. Okay, TCF. Right, and obviously you've got the cash flow 603 here, 603 there, 603. 603 and 543. Okay. Did you guys follow that example? Does that make sense? Easy yeah, or difficult? Just that. Yeah, I still remember all of it, but it it's quite easy simple. if you've got the equations. Yes, you need to remember those templates, those formats, um, the the working, the, the calculations. Yeah. Yeah, but if you've got the template, then it's pretty straightforward. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Now we need to see if you guys can work out payback period, initial investment, TCF, uh, not TCF, um, PI, profitability index, okay, NPV, IR, and payback period, the ones we saw, the ones we saw early on. Okay, so when calculating payback period, what does payback period focus on, guys? How long it take? To pay back what? The uh, initial investment. Correct. So the focus with payback period is this. When do I receive it back? 
Does payback period yes. take time value of money into consideration? Yes. No, it doesn't. Payback period just looks at when do you pay back the initial investment. Any cash flow <coughs> after having paid it back isn't taken into consideration. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. What is the yes. accept and reject criteria? Well, you've got it here. Do you want payback period to be longer or shorter? Shorter. 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 The sooner you pay back the initial investment, the better. Here's one for you guys to try. I want the payback period for A and B. See if you can work that out. Okay, the calculator. All right, so the payback period we've calculated. Right, obviously you've got a certain amount of cash that's coming every year. Right, have a look at this. Does payback period provide for those amounts after the end of the period? Yeah. No, it doesn't. Okay, think about this. Payback period we said was for A was five years, right? Yeah. So does A consider year six's inflow? No. No. Okay, payback period for project B was three and a half years. Do I consider those two? The hundred and the fifty at year five and six? No. No. Okay, so do you agree payback period doesn't take time value of money into consideration? Here we're looking at time value of money. Okay, so what does the payback period do? It recovers the initial investment. What does the present value do? It works out this. It works out the present value of the future cash flows minus the initial investment gives you the NPV. Okay, because do you agree you will have what at the beginning of the cash uh, beginning of the timeline? Time zero. You'll have time initial zero initial investment. investment. What will you have over time? Okay. Cash flows. Do you agree? Yeah. So what do I do? I take all of those and I discount them all the way back and I get what? This. Present value of your future, cash flows. I subtract the initial investment and what do I land up with? Present value. Correct. When do I accept? When it's greater. Why? Because they're getting more value. Correct. And when do I reject? As when it's as below zero. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So let's see if you guys can work out the NPV for A and B. Okay. Tell me. You give us A's answer when you get it. And then Carl, give us B's answer when you get it. Okay, what did you get for A? 161020.7130. Hold on, 161 what? 161020.7130. Comma seven, one three zero. Okay, Carl, your answer for B. Actually, I as well. Hold on, I'll do it. B quickly now. What did you get? Um, 15 and 7. Oh no. I might have, uh, I mean 4928. I might have 
498, let's check. Okay, first answer's right. Okay, Tammy, did you say positive or negative? It's negative. Okay, you should have told us it's negative because that makes a big difference. Sorry, I forgot about it. Okay, if it's a negative, do we accept or do we reject? I reject. Yes, reject. you reject. Okay, Carl, what happened with your one? Why didn't you get 21? What happened with the calculator? Are you using the um, cash I, mode? I, I, uh, yes, I am. Okay, cash so cash mode, mode, going to cash mode. mode. Go into cash mode. Insert an yeah, I there. What's the I here? 15, 15. Okay, so put 15 there, then press EXE, yep. then go to the cash editor, then you've got the table. Okay, number one, what do I put in? Do you put the negative 55? Yes, you must put in negative 55. Yeah, that's where I'm going wrong. Because it's Don't an initial investment, which is an outflow. Do you agree? Yep, uh, so that's where I went wrong. Okay, so do it again. Do you get the right answer now? Yeah, uh, no, hold on. Oh, come on. Uh, blah, 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 two, four, 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 We said how many years is it? Three and a half years, correct? Mm. No, 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 you're putting in all the amounts. All the way up to six? Yes, because it's the net present value. Oh, okay. Okay, net present value, it's not payback period, so you put in all the amounts of the calculator. Ah, uh, there we go, that's where my mistake's coming. Okay, yeah, I'm getting it now. Great. Okay, so make sure you insert all the values because you're working out the net present value. Happy? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so now we need to look at internal rate of return. What does that represent? It represents the amount that you get over the life of the project. Okay, so if I've got IRR, IRR is telling me what does the project actually provide that's going to give me a net present value of zero. That's what you're saying. Okay, so what do you want? Do you want a bigger IR or a smaller IR? Bigger IR. Definitely. Okay, because you're going to compare it to the cost. So if I accept, I want the IR to be greater than cost. If I reject, I would want the IR to be less than cost of capital. Do you agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, that's straightforward. That's pretty easy to remember. Let's see if you can work it out. Give me IR for A and B. Okay, again, Tammy A, Carl B. See what you get. Answers, guys. Uh, Just hold on. Okay, Carl, what did you get? We will ask Ken. Carl? Uh, it was 13.0601 for B. Okay, 13. Tammy, yours? Um, 1.8255. 
1.8255, correct. 30.06, correct. Good. You guys have the right answers for IRR. Are we going to accept A? No. Are we going to accept B? Yeah. No. No, they're both less than the cost of capital. Do you agree? Yeah. Good. Okay, so that was IR. Let's see if you guys can annualize NPV. Okay, so here's X and Y. Two different projects with different useful lives. What are the NPVs for X and Y? Quickly work that out. Right, do you guys have answers for X and Y? I think so. Okay, so tell me, what did you get for X? Negative 8974006. 897, okay. Carl, what did you get for Y? I got negative 107731. Okay, so both negative amounts. Okay, if I look at NPV, Okay, X's NPV was 25993. I didn't get that. Okay, Y was negative 1077. Yeah, so Carl's answer was right. Tammy, you need to redo yours. I got Y right. I don't know why I got X wrong. Okay, do X again. Okay, let me just quickly check. Okay, now I get it. I think I didn't put that negative for the initial investment. Okay, yeah, be careful. All right, so now you guys have got the NPVs. In order to annualize the NPV, all I need to do is calculate the payment. I need to insert the amount that I've got here. Okay, so which project is better here? X or Y? X. X. Definitely X, because X generates an NPV that's positive. So do they create value? Yes. Does Y create value? No. No, Y destroys value. Right, so you're either going to be destroying value yearly at an amount, or you're going to destroy value yearly as an amount. Okay, so that's the payment for Y annualized, and that's the payment for X annualized. See if you can get those figures on your calculators. How the hell? What's wrong? I can't wait. Okay, you're substituting in your NPV, right? Your NPV must becomes the PV in the question. Okay, but must I now... Can I just, because I still have my previous answer on, do I just press PV and... You can try, I don't know if it will work on the HP. The HP is not a very good calculator to use. Um, the user interface isn't so great. Sharp and cast is a bit better. But if you want to try, try. So just press PV and then, and then put in an N of 4, put in an I of 15 and compute PMT. Do you get the right answer? Well, I don't know. I really cleared it now. Are you guys getting those figures? Yeah. Okay, Carl, yes, Tammy? Right. right, two, five, nine, nine, three point three three one nine three P V four N fifteen I payment. No. Payment, not. Something's wrong. Redo. Second function, clear the calculator. Start over. PV equals. Okay. 
PV fifteen I four in payment. Can I got it? Okay, good. All right, so that's X and Y, and that's annualizing the NPV. Why did I annualize NPV for these two projects? Why did you put that calculation on again? I'm busy writing Okay. You got that? Yes. Okay. So why did I use annualized NPV here? I don't know. You don't know? Come, you should know. Because there's different periods in town. Yes. Okay, X only had a four year useful life. Y had six years. Is it fair to compare X and Y? Based on NPV? Okay, no. no, I then need to use the annualized NPV. Because then we're looking at per year. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so this is what we've got. Okay, per year. Per year, which is what we looked at on the previous slide. Okay, I should have put this up a bit earlier. Okay, so you could have entered your answers in here. Okay, so the answers that we had here are the ones that you would include on that slide. Right, we looked at NPV, you guys worked it out. You got the 9. 104 and you got the negative 28 okay so even based on annualized npv which project is better still x still x okay x is still generating value do you agree yeah okay good all right then we've got some theory slides coming up now first bit cost of capital how do companies raise finance guys Debt and equity. Good. Okay, so Tammy, tell us about debt. What are the characteristics of debt? Tax deductible, the what interest is tax on deductible? debt. The interest. Good. What else? Tell us more about debt. There's no ownership. Good. No ownership. Is there a fixed term? Yes. Yes. Okay. The debt. Once the debt is paid, the debt is gone. Do you agree? Yes. All right. Yes. Uh, Carl, tell us about equity. How is equity different from debt? Give us some characteristics uh, of equity. Well, equity is basically it's funds that are sold via bonds and shares of the company. So it's yeah. Also, give me part part ownership away. Okay, good. So equity is giving ownership away. Okay, equity is selling shares in the company, not bonds. Okay, bonds would be the debt. Okay. Okay, so the equity is purely the shares in the company. Right, so you're giving away ownership. Is there a specific time frame attached to it? Uh, no, not all of them. Some no. yes, but not all of them. Yeah, shares can be held indefinitely. Okay. okay. Is dividends tax deductible? No. No. Okay, so interest is, dividends isn't. Make sense? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Right, here's the note about WMCC and WAC. What is WAC standing for, Tammy? Weighted Average Cost of Capital. Yes, and Carl, what does WMCC stand for? Um, uh, what is it? I might as well weighted as well, weighted some, um, weighted marginal, um, 
Okay, here we go. I know it was weighted, uh, marginal something. Yeah, cost of capital. Marginal cost of capital. Okay, so the CCs always stand for cost of capital because you're dealing with finance. Okay, you want to know how much things cost, and then you're going to decide on whether to accept or to reject. Okay, so looking at this diagram, why do we accept on the left, Tammy? Because greater than and lower than what is higher what is lower the weighted average cost is higher no lower IRR is for the opportunity schedule IOS Okay, what is this representing? The whack. Okay, that represents the cost of capital. Okay, so when do I accept? When IRR is greater than the cost of capital. Whack. When do I reject? When it's lower than the capital cost. Correct, when the IOS, okay, the opportunity schedule, when the IRR is lower than the cost of capital. So you reject here, you accept there. Yes. Okay, we will look at a past paper question that covers this in, in a lot of detail. Okay, where you'll actually put numbers to the workings. It's a really good question. Got it? Okay. Yes. Perfect. Okay, then we've got some formulas here. All right, the first is for leverage. Okay, so when I look at operating leverage, obviously a company needs to cover what costs? Uh, Operate costs. The fixed costs. Okay, so the fixed costs must always be recovered. Do you agree? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what creates leverage in the company? It's the degree as uh, the degree the degree to which you have fixed cost because fixed cost would be constant and you can't change that and then you'd be looking at maximizing the output or the income. Okay, so with break even point, how do I calculate how do I calculate break even point? It's the fixed cost divided by the selling price minus the variable cost. Okay, when I look at this, okay. I'm getting an answer in what? Units or rands? Units. Yes. Okay, so if it's in units, how do I convert break even point into rand value? Times by each. The cost of each unit. Not the cost. <laughs> I can't even see what you're writing. The selling price. Okay. Break even in rands is break even in units times selling price. Um, just hold on one second. Okay, break-even point in rand is the break-even point in units times the selling price. That's it. Okay. Got it? Carl? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Operating leverage. When calculating degree of operating leverage, we're comparing the change in EBRT to a change in sales okay the one over the other so if I'm looking at a change in EBIT compared to a change in sales the only thing that affects okay your EBIT and your sales from an operational point of view in terms of leverage is your fixed costs we spoke about it earlier companies need to pay all their fixed costs if we can fix our cost if we can fix our costs and we can operate more effectively or more optimally, okay, it'll then contribute more towards our return. Okay, so operating leverage is dependent on your fixed costs. The smaller the denominator, the bigger the degree of operating leverage is going to get. 
Okay, because operating leverage is looking at how much can we do with what we currently have. Is that alright? Yeah. Any questions yeah. about operating leverage? Nothing. Okay, and then financial leverage is looking at this. The EPS. And the EBIT. So, what's missing here? Well, if you think about it, it's two things. The tax and the interest. Because if I'm looking at EPS, do you agree who gets the EPS? The owners. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Yes. What provides for that? It's the EBIT. And what does the EBIT have? It has tax and it has dividends and it has interest. Okay, so those are the components that would affect the EBT. Okay, EBT would be affected by interest and tax to get the EPS. EPS is paid out after having paid the dividends, the interest, and the tax. Okay, so what does this tell me about the company? This tells me how much leverage does the company have in terms of its financial leverage. Okay, so how much debt and equity do we have in the business, which is the firm's capital structure. Okay? Hmm. Good. Right, and then what happens if we combine the two? Well, now we're looking at sales. Sales is right at the top of your statement of comprehensive income. EPS is an owner-related measure that shows how much profit is going to be distributed per share for uh, according to the earnings. Right, so with total leverage, do I need this equation? No, I don't. I can remember this one because you should be able to calculate DOL and you should be able to calculate DFL. Those are the two important formulas. All you need to remember is just multiplication. If I multiply the one by the other, I get what answer? DTL, the total leverage. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. Good. And then the last one is just a note here about leasing versus, pur versus purchasing and capital structure. Okay, so Obviously, if I lease, am I renting or owning? Can be either. I'm renting. Rent. Okay, because I'm looking at the use of the asset, not the ownership. Okay, with purchasing, okay. I'm looking at what? Owning. Yes, where you have ownership. Okay, so give me some pros and cons. Tell me, why would I rather lease rather than purchase? Well, it's the risk of ownership. What about the ownership risk? Do you have the risk or don't you? You don't. Exactly. That's the advantage. So leasing avoids the risk of ownership. What else? Um, maybe the cost. Good. Sometimes leasing is cheaper than owning. Great. Carl, why should we purchase rather than lease? Well, because well, if you when you're leasing the other, then lease they can cover the payment of the purchase. What else? Um, You have, an as you have an asset for the company. Good. Okay, so definitely companies that are accumulating assets would prefer owning them rather than using them. Okay, but not for all assets. For assets that appreciate though. Not for assets that depreciate. Okay, so it'll be a good idea to purchase property. It wouldn't be such a good idea to purchase computer equipment. Because okay, computer equipment is going to get outdated, it's going to get old, it's going to be worthless at some point in time. Okay, but buying property, that's a different story. Make sense? Yeah. Good. Okay, so when doing the calculation, you're looking at the highest or lowest cost? Lowest. The smallest. Okay, so you want 
leasing or purchasing, the smallest cost will be the best option. Okay, because now you're minimizing the cost of operating the business from a leasing or a purchasing point of view. Always take things back in time. Time value of money will still apply here. And that's it. Next week, we'll obviously start with the assignments. We'll cover assignment one. And we might even start with assignment two as well. Okay, so for next week, try to do assignment one and two, as much of it as you can. Okay, we'll start with assignment one. Once we've completed it, then we'll just continue with assignment two. And then obviously later on, we'll cover the past papers. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, no. No, it's fine.